What's up everybody, Magic with RacingDudes.com, here to watch the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup Stakes in Grade 1 Race at Keeneland for three-year-old fillies going a mile and eighth on the turf. And you see here, Mission of Joy, the first one about to go in the gate. Uh, we're down to a field of actually nine in here. We had one scratch we knew of uh, beforehand, be your best, but also lost the long shots. Safine, Heavenly Sunday, and Prerequisite. Uh, you know, I thought this was really a two and a half horse race. Uh, you gotta look, respect Elusive Princess. She won the Saratoga Oak. She looked like an absolute monster that day, despite the horrible track conditions. The Four Maj, one of the best three-year-old fillies in the world in terms of turf racers right now. Uh, she's never going beyond a mile, and she is a half-brother to Modern Games, who is a great miler. Distance beyond that is a little questionable. We'll see if she can handle the mile. Nate here. I also am curious to see what the Six Lindy can do. Uh, just a four-horse field of Kentucky Downs that she beat in her North American debut, but did it very easily, and I thought has reason to step forward here in her second start in North America, second start with Brendan Walsh, and second start with Tyler Gaffleone aboard. Gaffleone always deadly at Keelan. Uh, a couple other Europeans to look out for, Sound, Sounds of Heaven, the seven horse. I think this is a prep for maybe the Breeders' Cup mile. And then also the eight, Alonda Queen with Louis Sides aboard. They're in the gate for the Elizabeth, and they're off. Looks like a good break for just about everybody. Uh, beforehand, we did see the four Maj wearing the uh, the red headpiece that you see sometimes Europeans, a lot of Japanese horses wear. She wasn't with a pony. She's a little, needs to be by herself, it seems like. And right here, she's kind of by herself out in the middle there. She's going to go to the front. You can see Flavian Pratt on Listed Princess is saying, please sit back a little bit. Please sit back. So the four is going to lead. Elusive Princess is going to follow right behind her. Mission of Joy on the rail uh she's gonna okay she's gonna acquiesce and now she, ooh, she had to take back out of john velasquez elusive princess tracking right behind maj i'm not sure if this is where usha and murphy wanted maj to be but this is where she's at and where she took him 23 and 1 pretty quick for the opening fraction you expect they slow it down here you'd hope so uh just because of you know they, they fight for position now they slow down the backside get a breather the 12 papilio running a huge race there uh in third right now uh, a, a, a filly that's been, you know, she won the Great Two Appalachian earlier this year at, Ka at Keeneland, but every time that she would face horses in the summer, it's always like some top European seemed to come along and beat her, come along and beat her. And right here, you've got two top Europeans right in front of her. So we'll see what she can do. Seven Sounds of Heaven wearing the Glen Hill Farm Craig, Ner Craig Burnett colors, uh, the seven there. Uh, Elusive Princess making her move. You do see that they went 24 and a half seconds for that second split and then another 24 there. This is any horse's race right here. Maj looks like she still has plenty left. Pratt just pressed go on Elusive Princess. This is the showdown we wanted to see. And Maj is kicking away from all of them. Mission Joy fighting super impressively there. She's going to try and upset this whole thing at 25 to 1. Maj is holding clear though. Maj is going to end up winning this race. Lindy with a huge effort from last to full. Oh, Lindy almost got there. Maj wins the Queen Elizabeth Challenge Cup. Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup. A minute 48 flat. Uh, 12 and twelve and 2 for the final. So not bad. I know the going is good, so it's not firm. Um, boy, she was fresh and, and tugging on, on Ushin Murphy on the backstretch there, too. He was able to get her to settle, which was very impressive. Uh, you see from the three quarters to the mile was actually sub 24. So she picked it up when she needed to look at Lindy come flying, man. I used Lindy in my pick five uh, ticket. I really thought that she was going to get up there and, and, and upset it there. In those last little stages. She was moving very quickly. Elusive princess uh, might have sat a little too close to the leader there um, and just wasn't able to kick on with her. Uh, but Pratt kind of had to do, you know, that's where the Philly put him. He was actually pulling back an elusive princess at the start. Remember? Uh, all right, so going into this, I said I was a little concerned possibly about Maj and the distance and, the you know, never try a mile and an eighth. Yeah, no issue there. Um, now, she did almost get caught there by the six. Philly and Mare Turf is, I believe, going to be a mile and three eighths or a mile. No, it's a mile and a quarter at Santa Anita. Uh, so they're going a mile and a quarter. She's going to have to stretch out another eighth of a mile or they could go Breeders' Cup mile with her. I don't know enough about this horse's past, uh, other than the fact that she's now four for four uh, and and perfect in two Group One races this year. But uh, man, she, super impressive filly. Definitely deserves to be in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, maybe you nominate to both. You nominate to the mile. You nominate to the filly and mare turf. I think the mile is going to be a tougher field. A because you're facing the boys. B just because there's a lot, a lot better milers that I can think of than mile and a quarter filly and mare turfers. So. Uh, there is that. However, again, she she was getting caught late there, but she did all the running herself. 
I'd nominate to both Philly Mare Turf and the Mile. I think the Philly Mare Turf might be a better fit for her, but uh, just because I think the Mile, like I said, is going to be tougher this year. Uh, but super impressive. Elusive Princess, take some time off. Come back. You know, maybe we'll see her. Uh, I wouldn't go Breeders' Cup with her off of this. I What I would do, take a little bit of time off, target the Grade 1 American Oaks, December 26th, the Malibu Day at Santa Anita Park. It's a three-year-old restricted Grade 1 race, mile and eighth on the turf. She will get firm ground on that one, so target that is what I would do with her. Uh, Lindy, definitely Breeders' Cup. I'd go Philly Mare Turf with her. Mile and an eighth, she was really closing fast, and I think she could uh, really surprise at the Philly Mare Turf there. And then uh, Mission of Joy ran uh, definitely outran her 25-to-1 odds there. Um, I don't know that I would go Breeders' Cup with her, uh, but a very, very good effort. Maybe another filly that uh, you target the American Oaks. You know, Grand Motion has definitely uh, done that before coming out to California. American Oaks in Del Mar might have something for her as well at the end of November. So those are my thoughts on the Grade 1 Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup Stakes at Keeneland uh, on October 14th. The last Grade 1 race in America, I believe, until the Breeders' Cup. So that's always uh, exciting. So... Those are what I think about it. It's now officially run the Breeders' Cup. We'll think about what uh, these horses will do and how they're going to get there and how they will look. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments section before you leave. Click like on the video. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash Racing Dudes. And of course, visit RacingDudes.com for free picks every race, every day, every track across the country. Until next time and for all the Breeders' Cup coverage, see ya. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track. It's Breeders' Cup season, and we've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the World Championships. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash Racing Dudes right now. Click the notification bell. You never want to miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.